dollars there's a very good chance that on the resale market it'll sell for like 800 600 dollars or so mm. and that's just like these sneakers there are sneakers like the marty mcfly sneakers that came out a few years ago those were on an ebay auction for like forty one thousand dollars what uh because yeah, they're extremely rare and there's a lot of rich people out there that like want to collect these um so is it the people that get these bots are they more uh collectors or are they resellers there's a good chance that they're most likely resellers yeah. because like they're basically investing in a tool to help them make more money mm. um like it, i don't think they'd spend that much money to just you know collect these sneakers on, on their own but it would be a healthy investment I, I would say if you're in the reselling business all right last twitter reported a drop of nine million monthly users in its latest quarter but its stock is way up thanks to the company hitting a sizable profit uh, i wanted to pitch this question to you guys is Twitter somehow benefiting from all of Facebook's misery? What, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, I don't think it's hurting them. I mean, but the fact that they lost 9 million users seems like a lot. Well, they've been killing off, incidentally, a lot of bots. Oh, so so they've been getting around a lot of fake accounts getting out of there. So maybe that helps. I think for social media, they're getting in a different game now. Of I think in the past, it used to always be, okay, what's your daily, monthly average user or anything like that? And, you know, it, it was a race to see who could get the most users. But now I think they're more focusing on engagement and like actual users. And that's why they're OK with killing off all these like bot accounts. Um, in the past, they were just there and it kind of helped them inflate their numbers a bit to investors. But Absolutely. now I think it's much more important for them to say, hey, look, we have a clean and healthy platform. Do you think Jack Dorsey is actually a set of identical twins? Why would that? Why be is the, that a question? Oh yeah, why is this that a is, thing? Because he's he's actually miraculously running Square and Twitter at the same time. Uh, it doesn't really feel like he's running Twitter though, <laughs> right? I don't know. He's sort of just like a mascot. Yeah. I either way, uh, I wanted to mention Dara Kerr's deep dive story about deforestation and the Amazon uh, that just published today. If you want to read about these stories, check us out on CNET. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Alfred Ng. and I'm Jeff Bacalar. Thanks for listening. All right, thanks everybody for joining us for the recording of the audio podcast, and it's nice to have Jeff on. Jeff, have you ever even been on 359 yet? Apparently, he's been yeah. on eight times. I've been on a bunch. Really? I love that he knows the exact amount. Like it's he like puts a notch on his desk every time. Mm -hmm. It's true. I have it carved in into the bottom. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> ben, I wanna say, ben also does, but it's just like his desk is ruined. <laughs> I I, th I, I, I think it's desk. been anywhere from four to six times. Well, we love having you on. Thank yeah, you very much. My pleasure. I mean. To do a four-minute podcast, that's you guys don't know how good you have. Well, we yeah, went but now you got to sit around time. for twenty minutes and talk to people. So yeah, okay. it was we it was that. very very funny mini story that happened as we were walking in today to do the podcast was that Brian was trying to talk me out of talking about Red Dead Redemption Two because he was like, J "Have you have you played the game? Do you even know what you're talking about?" I'm like, "No, I haven't. I haven't played the game." And then luckily, you walked in, yeah, and and proved me right. Today this was my was early actually... day in the office. You really <laughs> caught me. Well, you were working on this I mean, review apparently to until be fair, midnight. Like, it would have been really weird if you had never played the game. It was like, "Hey guys, today we're going to talk about something that I've never played." Ask me anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go, Mister Qualified, right, right here. Right. And we're going to talk about sneaker bots too, which is another thing I know nothing I, that, about. That story's wild. I uh, I'm a big sneaker guy, but I don't have any of those bots. Oh no, yeah. Unless you're like reselling, I would make the argument that there's no reason for you to have these bots. So I have a friend whose little brother. That's what he does for a living. Mm -hmm. Really? I don't know if he. Ha I, I I wonder if he has a bot like this mm -hmm. or that bot. But like you go, he he sends me photos of mm -hmm. his room, and it's like. 80 hundred stack yeah. boxes of like you know all those ridiculous so my shoes. friends do it manually as well but like it's much harder when you're doing it manually because you're competing with all these bots yeah. and i've tried the manual way once just because there was a pair that i really wanted and it is impossible. incredibly frustrating and impossible because you know, like adidas and all these brands mm -hmm. need to like do something well that's well, the thing they limit, so, right yeah like they limit so, how many you buy because you mentioned in right, your story you that, could own um, 40 bots yeah so the thing oh, is with, that um, is true with this bot uh they don't actually go after nike and adidas own website so they'll go after like Foot Locker or like foot action that sells a these resell, sneakers yeah. um but they don't do adidas or nike because they have um a lot of protections against it so one of the things that nike does is they'll do a raffle through an app and it's much harder to send an app 
to send a bot towards an app address yeah. than it is a website. And Adidas mm. does similar kind yeah. of stuff. Well, they they have like a lot of like, are you a robot kind of things yeah. when you try. It's still impossible. Like mm-hmm. I always try to buy new Adidas stuff and I can never yeah. get it. So they'll do they'll do a raffle way now where you use an app and then you enter to buy to buy the sneakers and they pick like a thousand people that might get it. So it's much harder that way. Um, a lot of brands have been doing that too, like Supreme, which is another like hype, like streetwear brand has been doing that, um, where they send you a raffle through. You basically have to win a raffle to wait online. It's and crazy. Funko which is, Pop it, does the same thing as yeah. well. Look, I would say that that's at least helpful in, in so far as like, you mentioned in your story that one company bought more than a thousand tickets to a U2 concert. Yeah, that's in different. A that's minute. movie. That's like concert tickets. That's a different right. But market. At, at the same time, that was like Wild West type of situation yeah. where you're able to buy using bots like mm. so quickly that like n- regular people don't even stand a yeah. chance. Mm-hmm. So yeah. anyway, let's get to questions. Sure. All let's right. Let's do some Red Dead. Is let's, there? Oh, there's plenty of Red Dead. Okay. Uh, What's priority up? one says, Jeff, is it a must play for Red Dead one to enjoy Red Dead two? Um, I don't, it's not a must play, but I think, you know, there is a lot of exposition that, um, it makes sense with, with having the context of Red Dead 1 in the back of your head. Well, what you said is Red Dead 1 is a, or Red Dead 2, I should say, is a prequel, right? Yeah, Red Dead 2 is a prequel, so uh, there are characters in Red Dead 2 that show up in Red Dead 1, if you're following it chronologically, it's good for backstory stuff. I don't think in any way like you need to play Red Dead 1 to appreciate Red Dead 2. Um, it's perfectly fine on its own. And I think there's a lot of Easter eggy kind of like special, you know, tips of the hat for people who are familiar with the story. But I mean, to play Red Dead 1 right now in front of Red Dead 2 is like a huge undertaking. Like you basically have to play a 60 hour game right now. <laughs> To get ready for <laughs> the 180 hour game. I well, mean, you had like how many years is is in between Red Dead One and Two? Uh, so are you talking about in game story or phys- like actual? Well, let's go with both. <laughs> okay, so in game story, I think they're like 11 years apart. Mm-hmm. This the Red Dead Two takes place in 1899, um, and actual development time, uh, Red Dead One came out in 2010. Mm-hmm. Wow. Like eight was it years that to long catch ago? Up. <laughs> it was that long ago. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it was. Yeah, I read the um, New York Mag uh, profile of of uh, Rockstar when Did they were like know? developing that game. Um, it, that's another sort of story that's going on during this entire thing, which is the hundred hours per week. <laughs> yeah, it's a really difficult thing to kind of like um, you know have that go on to, and then just give this mm-hmm. indifferent opinion about the game you know i mean when you were playing it did it like seem like yeah this i can definitely see like the developers pour, pouring that crazy amount of 100 oh, yeah. but i think you know and it, this isn't making excuses for anyone but i think you anytime you experience something that is creatively astonishing whether it be a movie or you know a piece of art or whatever it is a game i think it's like oh my god how many people spend how many hours yeah. on this game or movie or whatever it is so yeah, it's uh, it's the fact that nothing is repetitive in this game is, I think, what really makes it stand That's apart from pretty crazy. Like the fact that like you're never do doing too. a mission where you're yeah. like, oh, I know what I need to do. I just got to collect the chickens. <laughs> yeah, I just got to collect chickens. You know, you play. Well, that's game, what like, I started to realize with Fallout Four was that after a while, the missions just repeated themselves, right. and They're they just don't different environment, different was, people. And they don't push you forward enough. Sure. So it that, sounds like they did a better job with this game of actually moving forward the narrative, and that you're not is, just like aimlessly mm-hmm. searching around. Which that was is basically helpful. what like always like makes me stop playing open world games because sure. like after a while, it's just like okay, I, yeah. I'm doing the exact same thing. You know, this is a game that you're gonna want to keep playing probably all the way through because. There is something insane, like a thousand unique activities to, mm. to accomplish. Nice. Um, and I've maybe done a hundred of them. I mean, it is wild how much stuff is in this game. At a, to a point where you, where you, once you, you know, the game opens up very slowly, and but once you sort of like are let loose and and you see the scope of what you're being offered, it uh, it's it's almost like overwhelming to a point where you're just like, oh no, <laughs> all of this. <laughs> Oh, I can't do this in a week. So, yeah. How many people do you think are going to take off of work just to play the game? So, I've heard wild stories. I've heard of stories of, like, small offices that um, they buy everyone a copy of the game and give them Friday off. 
Seriously? Yeah, I've heard two independent stories about that. In the games industry, of it's, course. Sorry, oh. it's not just like <laughs> this accounting firm is like doing it. <laughs> Which, by the way, know. I need to get a job at that accounting <laughs> firm. I mean, that's a great accounting firm. It's not like, you know, people close a store and just like play the game. But I've heard a lot of stories of like PR people or whatever it is like, hey, you've earned it. Take Friday off, play Red Dead for, for 15 hours. <laughs> so no you, national holiday is what you're saying? No, no, just election day. The banks are still open, thankfully. Mm. Uh, let's take some more questions, shall we? Uh, let's talk about the size and scope a little bit more. Uh, specifically, how big is the file size for the game? And then if you want to follow that up, how big is the world? Now, you used a pretty good analogy for me yesterday in comparing it to like Breath of the Wild, which is my most current frame of reference as far as open world goes. Mm. But... Try to tell them, give them a, a good, like, paint paint a visual uh, picture of, like, how far and wide that game can take you. Um, I don't necessarily have, like, a one-to-one scale comparison, like, geographically of what the, the game's size feels like. But just put it like this. I very rarely will ride around in that game and just be like, oh, I've seen that before. You know, like... There's so much you're constantly going in a direction you likely have not gone in. Mm. And, um, you know, not a lot of retread. Yeah. I mean, you know, everything is so varied and unique, even though it is sort of like this old West thing. There are like the snowy mountains in the north, northern, you know, sort of reaches of of the map. Um, There's a huge body of water that's sort of centered in, in the whole thing. And. You just aren't really going to ever feel like this thing. I feel claustrophobic in this thing. It's it's, you know, for a long time, a lot of games would brag about like it's the size of Rhode Island. And you're like, oh, that's cool. But yeah, I mean, this is massive. Uh, A lot of games now are massive. This feels just as massive as anything else. Mm. And uh, as far as file size to download after you, because uh, it is available digitally, it will be, right? Yeah. Uh, I you have to get a whole new PS4 just to... I mean, <laughs> like I, a lot of people who I talked to reviewed the game had a clear out space. Um, I think the initial download is n- on PS4 was 95 gigs. <laughs> and what? I think that still makes you clear out as like a buffer, something like 110 uh, and that's the PS4 Pro. I don't know. I don't know if the regular PS4 version is somehow smaller. It might mm. be because it doesn't have as uh, high res textures in it. But it's a lot. It's a lot. Comes of game. On two, if you buy a physical copy, it comes on two Blu-rays. It's which is like unheard of. Wow, we haven't seen multi-disc gaming in a minute. Not like that. Uh, we saw it a lot last gen. Um, or or at least more frequently last gen. But right. I've never seen it right now. Mm. I mean. Two Blu-rays, that is... Two Blu-rays can hold, like, one 120 gigs, I think, or something. Well, there you go. Yeah. I mean, like, you were talking about roughly 110 gigs yeah, for, you need the, for a I download. think you need the extra 10 as, like, a buffer for installation, but the core file is something like 92 or 95 gigs. Yeah, it took me, like, four hours to download. I like that the the chat, there's people trying to guess the size of the game, throwing out words like Utah, Bronx, New Mexico, Arizona, Montana. Keep it going, guys. I want to see where this goes. It's uh, probably this. It's probably the size of like, I, I want to like think of a town that it would be the size of, but you like can't even do it. It's just, it's big. It's a big game. <laughs> <laughs> big wide world. Okay, we got a couple minutes left. Uh, we got a couple of graphics heads in the chat too. So you said some really stellar things about the visuals in the game. Can you give us a little more? Um. Yeah. It's uh. What's wild about Red Dead is that. I think Rockstar has the ability to recreate like human vantage points and create the illusion of like photorealism in a way that not many games are able to do. I think I think like God of War had shades of that a little bit, but God of War is obviously so based in fantasy that it's tough to kind of ground yourself in it. In Red Dead, there's a lot of little things, especially if you do like first person stuff. Yeah, um, that you're you get tricked really easily into being like, oh, I'm not looking at a movie. I'm looking at a video game. Uh, weather effects are wild. The skybox is like super convincing. You know, there's just stuff in that game that makes you have to kind of do a double take. Do you a lot have of any little little so little details? You were you were playing this on a PS4 Pro. Yeah. But, okay, so I have a PS4. 
It'll is, look it, fantastic. Right. Yeah. The experience yeah. graphically is not yeah. going to be substantially degraded no. if I don't have a no, Pro. No, no, It's okay. going to look great. I think if you have PS4 Pro or you have ambitions of one day getting one, or at the very least, if you have a 4K TV, do yourself a favor and get that. You know, or if you're if you can look, if you have a 4K TV, maybe a PlayStation 4 Pro will come a little easier to you. Mm-hmm. So if you're on the fence, man, do it. But I just spent Game all my money looks. on a 4K TV. Say what? But I just spent all my money on a 4K TV. How can I get a PS4 Pro? Well, you know, you just have to. Not treat yourself again for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas will have to come early. Just eat some PB and J's. Yeah, just live gotta... off live off cup of noodles. You'll be fine. You do that anyway, bro. <laughs> I do that anyway. <laughs> okay. Still broke. With the uh, last couple minutes coming down, uh, back into the open world sense, Priority One wants to know: Is it more open world than Far Cry th- Far Cry Three, my oh, yeah. favorite game of all time? Well, uh, I didn't hear that last part. Uh, they ask: Is it more open world than my favorite game of all time, Far Cry Three? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Yo, Far Cry, it's like, there's, they're not even that open world. I mean, Far Cry, yeah, like, yeah, I mean, the latest Far Cry game, those are open world games, but I mean... Like, mad small, isn't it? It's, I wouldn't call it small, but I think compared to what Red Dead 2 offers, it's sort of like a night and day uh, situation. Like the, I don't the, play that one. The scope and the, and the massiveness of Red Dead, I will say this, like, people, it sounds like a damn cliche, people will not be prepared for how overwhelming and sort of like daunting this game can feel this it's it feels insurmountable mm. in the beginning where you're just like how the hell how do, do i do this? do this you got to worry about a lot of things in this game and uh the open worldness is lends itself so well to being encouraged to explore and discover and do your own thing uh i think better than any game i've ever played like i i applaud games that figure out a way to encourage you to explore, but it comes so organically in Red Dead 2 that it's like, all right, they're the ne- they're the ones to beat now. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you say that, but it's no Shenmue, so I Look, guess I'll just I stand corrected. Myself. There can only be one true king. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, before we go, Jeff, did you get to try it on any other platforms? I know you did your primary playthrough on the PS4 Pro. On the Nintendo Wii. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you should do the Wii. <laughs> that thing doesn't run real well on Switch. I was surprised. <laughs> it, uh... No, I didn't. The play motion it. controls were awful. <laughs> just just <is laughs> it, you shoot with the joy. It's really <laughs> awkward. Perks and bonuses to PS4 versus Xbox versus PC. Uh, so it's not on PC. Um, I I hope it's on PC one day because. I mean, you know, I replayed Red Dead uh, when the sort of HD texture thing came out a, a couple years ago, and I was like, I was like, man, this game looks real good on Xbox One X at the time, and um, that's sort of like a thing. If you if you aren't gonna play Red Dead Two, and you're just like, I want to play the first one first, play it on Xbox One X. It looks really good. It holds up uh, remarkably. But I wish I knew that. I, I wish I could get them side by side. I haven't been able to do it. I would love to see. Excuse me. If there are differences between the One X and the PS4 Pro uh, right now, I can't imagine. Like they're really, you know, I've compared plenty of of enhanced games side by side, and it's really tough to discern a difference between the two. Mm-hmm. Um, I would be quite surprised if there was a real meaningful difference in fidelity between uh, the One X and PS4 Pro. Um, and that makes the, sense. What I can gather, uh, the way Rockstar likes to show this game off, they were showing it off on Xbox on um on PlayStation 4 Pro in their private sessions. So if they're showing it on PS4 Pro in house, they are quite confident in how that game looks on PS4 Pro. So don't go don't drive yourself crazy about which console to get it on. All right, we are at the uh, usual stopping point. Do we want to cram anything else in about the sneaker bots or uh, any of the other stories before we wrap it up today? You want to take one or two? I was just going to answer questions, but if nobody has any, I figured everyone cares more about Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, they're all over the game game today. Mm. The sneaker bot thing just tweaks me out, though. Uh, It's a cool story. It's very cool. cool. It's very interesting, guys. But it's just even more daunting that... Even the simplest thing is like buying your essential clothing is now regulated and automated. All right, for, it's not 
none of these are essential clothing though. These are like <laughs> true, true. extremely expensive and like rare sneakers. You're you're gonna be able to get your New Balance is fine. Like nobody, <laughs> which I did. <laughs> I got my grandpa new there, there, there are no bots going after that. <laughs> just, 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 all right, I'm putting a call out to the audience. Somebody build a bot that will find me rare Magic the Gathering cards. That's what I need. They probably, probably have. No, wow, there's you are. probably something out there, man. You are nerdier than I thought. All right, Damn. we gotta start digging. You guys help me look, okay? Get get Brian those dual land cards. Thank you. He needs, yes, he needs God. them. <laughs> my deck is a mess. Okay, well, it's time to Tell wrap it up. It. Say goodbye. Thanks to Jeff. Thanks to everybody for a good week. And uh, Ben, you want to take us on out of here under the weekend? Sure. The 359 is available on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, FeedBurner, Google Play Music, Google Podcasts, the Amazon Echo, and of course, CNET.com. Jeff, thanks so much for coming on. Thank thanks, you. everybody, for all your great questions. Have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you on Monday. Take care, folks.